Hello, we're Savage at the SAE. We're the internal combustion car of our Formula SAE racing team this year. Uh, I'm Harrison, I'm in charge of the chassis. This is Noe, in charge of suspension. Um, Zach's in charge of our train. Michael's in charge of the body, and Chris is in charge of human interface. Um, we each have about five to eight people on each of our sub teams, so that makes a total of around 50 <coughs> people on our teams. Um, our documentation is exclusively on Google Drive, so everything from this year and in past years is all on Google Drive. And we just put all of our information, anything that's valuable, is on there, so anybody can access it. Um, our schedule, these are the main dates. Uh, the main deadlines are we need to get the rolling chassis by March 13th, end of the quarter, for the winter design review. That's our goal for the, this quarter. And our competition is in June 17th, so we need the entire car running by then. The other ones are all data sheets, which tell us when we need to get certain parts of the car done. Uh, this is our chassis. So the design of the chassis is mainly to provide torsion rigidity for the car so that that along with the suspension will <coughs> keep all of our contact patches on the ground and it'll keep everything running smoothly. It also acts as a container for everything. So all of our components are mounted to the car. And also it acts as its own kind of constraint because everything on the car has to also fit inside of the chassis. Uh, our design for this quarter was split into three main parts. First part is we had to redesign the engine bay because last quarter we found out that the engine bay was too small for our engine due to a documentation error. Um, we're also making mounts for the engine and suspension, amongst other things, but those are the main ones. Our engine bay redesign was started at the beginning of the quarter. Uh, you can see we mocked up the engine because the CAD file that we, along with other schools, used was incorrect. So we had to take measurements of our own and mock it up with that red box. And so the top image is our engine with a sprocket uh, in the old engine bay. And you can see it does not fit. So we had to extend the engine bay so that it fits and that's done. The left image is that engine actually put in the chassis. You can see there's not enough space for anything else after that. Our engine mounts are pretty straightforward. We mount the chassis and the engine together, and they're designed so that the engine can be removed. So we are still in the process of manufacturing that, but there's some FDA done on it to make sure that it's strong enough and that it's triangulated properly on it. That's it for the week. So for our suspension design, um, the first thing we had to do was to pick the tires, because when you design a suspension, you design from the tire to the chassis. Um, and then <coughs> after the tires and wheels are chosen, we make a 2D geometry to give us a basic idea of the camber and the toe and all that. And then after that, we designed all the parts we bought. So we'll make the wheels in SolidWorks, we'll make the shocks, we'll make the hubs, and then after that, custom parts. So custom parts would be the uprights, front hubs, and control arms. And that's just to do with packaging. And then we manufacture. So these are the 2D drawings. So right here we have a front. The main numbers here are oh, too small, but you have the scrub radius right here, which determines your steering field. You have camera right here, which determines the handling characteristics of the vehicle. You have roll center height, which determines the jacking forces on the vehicle. And then you have the track. And then one of the most important things on this image is right here, the max vertical CG. When we go to competition, this car has to pass a 60, yeah, 60 degree tilt test. So when you tilt it 60 degrees, these are 30 degree angles right here. So this line will be vertical after they tilt it. And any CG you have will have to be in this triangle right here. And it's the same for the rear. So these are the wheels that are IP or they are Hoosier 18 by 7.5 uh, inch wide tires. Uh, they fit a 10 inch wheel, and then the wheel is an ITP 10 by 8 with a 5 plus 3 offset. This is the most important number. Yeah. <laughs> this, the offset is the most important number in here because it determines all of our pack shape constraints for 
uh, control arms, hubs, and uprights. Uh, the shocks, so ideally you'd want to pick shocks that come with dyno charts and um, all the information. Um, but these shocks are the cheapest we have found. They are 400 for a pair, so it's around no, it's 700 for four shocks. So besides the engine, this is the second most exp uh, expensive part of the vehicle. So we've used these in the past. They worked well enough that we can run them again and uh, keep the cost benefit. Uh, uprights. So these are one of the custom parts we have to make. Um, the dimensions on these that, uh, are determined by the bearings and the wheels. So if we have a 10 inch wheel, both of these uprights have to be below the 10 inch uh, region. And then you have, right here we have the front uprights. Uh, we designed these to be a simple design that we could just cut together and weld. And then in the rear we have a CNC aluminum uh, design. So hubs. Front hubs, um, we traditionally manufacture ourselves because it's not um, that difficult for us. But in the rear, uh, where we have to have splines for the drive shafts, um, we don't have the tooling to manufacture that, so we just purchase them. Um, so here's the current hubs that we we're manufacturing in the USA machine shop. Uh, and then the rear hubs, those are the ones we bought. They come with a 3.75 by four bolt pattern, as well as a 100 by four bolt pattern. And then the front has 100 by four bolt pattern with 144 by four bolt pattern. Uh, here's wheel assembly. So for those who haven't seen how um, car wheels are put together, so you have the wheel right here, the upright, goes through the middle, the hub is what connects to the wheel, and then you have bearings to rotate around. Um, so in the front we have two tapered roller bearings, uh, one on the front of the hub, one on the rear, and in the rear we have, this is also double bearing setup, but it's a double ball bearing setup um, with tapered uh, races, and that will prevent the side loads from destroying our wheels. Uh, and then here's the final suspension design. So we have the wheel uh, assembly right here, the control arms, and the steering wings. Um, you can see the push rod connected for the rocker mechanism, which actuates the shocks. Uh, front and rear is pretty much the same, except the steering wing, obviously not in the rear. Now I'll pass it off to Pat. Uh, our powertrain design goals for this quarter uh, and year was actually to broaden the power band of the vehicle, so give it more torque, give it more pull off the line, it's going to give us quicker lap times and autocross type of end, and then centralize and lower uh, the vehicle mass, give us uh, closer to that 50-50 weight distribution, give us a little more nimble tight handling, and then increase the functionality through engine packaging because what other teams have had problems with is making it so that the packaging is tight but functional for maintenance to still be performed. And then, of course, maximize the vehicle reliability because to win, first have to finish the race. So going through the design procedure, how we start is with a simple formula, power to weight ratio. So the engine that's going to give us the most power to weight is the engine we choose. For us, that was a 2006 <coughs> Yamaha R6 engine, about 75 horsepower and 45 foot-pounds of torque. Then we went on to the drive line. Uh, what we're using for that is a uh, torsion limited slip differential out of an Audi, and then with a custom aluminum housing uh, to make it a little bit smaller packaging. And then onto the intake manifold. That had to be uh, acoustically tuned to a certain RPM. We chose 7,000 RPMs, because if you look at data from the uh, autocross race, 75% of your time is spent at that 7,000 RPM region or below it, and that happens to be where max torque is for our engine. Then the exhaust manifold is designed from that, so it also had to be acoustically tuned to the same RPM to allow for uh, maximum engine scavenging, or exhaust scavenging, which is basically just timing the pressure waves coming out of that, so you have high pressure on the outside of the exhaust valve and low pressure on the other side, so you're pushing out as much exhaust as possible, bringing more uh, 
fresh air and giving you more power. Then we went on to the cooling system. That's as simple as just finding out how much heat needs to be rejected from the engine and then finding radiators that can do that. So that's about a third of the max horsepower is about the heat you need to reject. So for us, it's about 15 kilowatts. And then the fuel system, we needed to design that so it's that under hard cornering, we wouldn't starve the engine of fuel. And I'll show you guys uh, some more CADs uh, showing that in a second. And then electronics. Uh, we have to run sensors that are different from the actual stock bike. And we also have to run a piggyback ECU to allow for uh, better dyno tuning. It's called a power commander. So we had to splice it all into our wiring harness. So moving on, one of the biggest problems, as Harrison mentioned, was the packaging. We couldn't, there wasn't an accurate CAD model of the engine. No other school was had it either. Yamaha wasn't giving it out. So what we decided to do was go to the fourth floor of engineering power to Rapid Tech. And they let us use their facilities to actually scan the entire engine and create a 3D model on SOLIDWORKS. So once we had that, we were able to, uh, if you want to flip over to the next slide, we were able to then start putting together our intake manifold, which you see on the top right there. Um, now that we had a good base to go off of, design our engine mounts to resist around 2 Gs and 45 foot pounds uh, a moment on the engine. We did that with just four mounts. And we actually had to change out the threads. They were aluminum on the engine, changing those to steel. Uh, they weren't holding up before under the, the hard loading. Uh, and then you can see from here, we have really two radiators. Get it so that we're having a little better weight distribution and we're centralizing them. So we're pushing them up a little bit and we can run those in side pods and run them, uh, pull them in series with two 5.2 inch pole fans that are shrouded. So from the next slide, what you guys can see here is our exhaust header design. What that is doing is using equal length primaries as well as a four to two and then a two to one collector. And basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us better torque on the engine. And then underneath the firewall right there, which is, you can see it's at a 45 degree angle, that's where the fuel tank sits. And the fuel tank basically has a catch can or a little basin where the fuel pickup is, and then it also is, has drainage to that. So they're hard cornering, you're not getting uh, a high angle on the fuel and, and starving the engine in the pickup. <coughs> and sucking the air into your line. Uh, so I'll pass it on to Michael now for the aero body design. The aero body, we started out last quarter with three different people designing the body, and then from there we chose what the bump best. And what our goals were was to uh, increase downforce, decrease drag, and also ease of manufacturing because we are manufacturing ourselves. We're limited to what we can do. So we wanted nice flat planes where we could and subtle edges and like good round parts that we could make. What we wanted to do at the beginning of the quarter was go with carbon fiber and we were the debating between carbon fiber and then 3003 sheet aluminum. We ended up going with aluminum because it is a lot cheaper. We're building a body for about $150 where just carbon fiber for our body was going to be about $700, not including resin or molding material. So we ended up going with aluminum because of the cost and also because we have the facilities to um, shape aluminum, but we do not have the facilities for carbon fiber when there is carbon. This was the top left picture is what we chose as our first design and we have the uh, coefficient of drag and coefficient of lift for that. What we are currently on is the bottom right one and that is we decrease the drag and um, or yeah decrease the drag and increase the downforce a little bit. We also are currently designing the side pods for the radiator, so we're going through using flow simulation and finding the pressure difference and the temperature difference in the side pods, and those are currently being designed. This is us manufacturing the aluminum body. We started out making a cardboard model of the body to see if it would actually work because cardboard, um, actually tank board, sorry, is a pretty good model of what thin sheet aluminum could do. 
So that is where we're currently on the body. There's a picture on the right, and by the end of the quarter, I think we're going to have a finished body. So we should be pretty good with our schedule. Now, Chris will tell you about human interface. Right, so I was in charge of the human interface subteam, and <coughs> basically I'm in charge of everything the driver touches. So last quarter we started with the entire steering system, and we designed that. We want the driver to be as comfortable as possible, so that means not taking your hands off the wheel. So we wanted only a 180 degree lock to lock wheel, um, wheel motion, and that would put the turning radius of the vehicle at 15 feet. Um, and then this quarter we've been working on the engine control, so how does the driver start the car, how does, and how does the driver control the throttle and the clutch, and then also how is the driver positioned, you know, what is, what is the seat angle, what's most comfortable for the driver. Um, so the process, especially for the steering, was we need to figure out our geometry requirements first, you know, what's the steering angle, what's the turning radius of the car. Once we have that, we need to figure out, well, what's the force that's going to be on these tie lines? What's the force in the upright and the connection tabs? Um, and with those requirements, we can then make the material selection, finalize the design, and start manufacturing. And so far, this quarter and the last quarter, we've accomplished um, the complete manufacture of the steering system and also the firewall. And the driver's not exactly touching the firewall, but that, uh, that helped us determine the seat angle, too. Just a quick note, you guys are over yeah. 15 minutes, so a couple more minutes to wrap it up. Um, work in progress this quarter. Right now, we have finished the design for the shifting and the seat. You can see the mock-up of the seat on the left, and we're currently in the process of welding that together, just from 100 thou, um, 50, 52 aluminum. And the shifting system's on the right. There's a shifter at the driver's right hand, and there's a system of pulleys and linkages that goes back to the shifter's line on the engine. Um, future work. So later this quarter and next quarter, we want to design and implement the electrical system of the car. So the starter circuit, the ignition circuit, and like the brake over travel circuit, and install a pedal assembly upon arrival. All of that is, is the design is complete. We just we're waiting for it to arrive. Yeah, Thank you.